Well, I gotta tell you, every single time I put out a Range Rover video, it gets monster views not only by people who can afford to buy these prestigious vehicles, but a lot of people aspire to own a Range Rover. This is the Range Rover Sport. It's the autobiography. The one you see here has 22 inch optional wheels and standard on the supercharged models, you get a five liter V8 with 510 horsepower. This is more power than anybody really needs, but it really appeals to people who want to have the best of the best. Now the Range Rover is available with a supercharged six cylinder. It's got the engine that I would choose, the TD6 with 440 pound feet of torque. That's the six cylinder diesel and then the supercharged V8. When you buy the supercharged model, you get the four way air suspension that lowers and raises depending on what you're doing with it. This one is now in its lowest setting for getting in and out of the vehicle. It also settles down on the highway for greater aerodynamic and body roll effect and can be raised right up if you're doing off roading. This is especially helpful going into underground parkades or going over large curbs. So that's standard on the supercharged V8 models. Inside, it's more of what we've come to see from Range Rover, and it's the one area I really Really believe this vehicle could vastly improve on. All right, first, what do you get with this autobiography? And then we'll get into some of the things I think they could improve on. With the autobiography, you get a special stitching on the seats and it's called Oxford leather. Uh, that's nice. They're heated and cooled in the front. They're heated and cooled in the back. You also get the large 12 inch screen in the center of the dash and a digital dashboard behind the steering wheel. That's not standard on all Range Rover Sports and it is very nice to have those features. One of the things is one of the real weak points of Land Rover, Jaguar and Range Rover was the head units until a couple of years ago, they were horrible. Now they've got sort of up-to-date systems and they're quick and they do a very good job and the interface is very easy to understand. You get a bit more bright work on the inside of this vehicle as well if you get the supercharged model. Like around the switches on the top of the doors for the windows. On the base model, looks really cheap and plasticky. Just putting a little bit of aluminum trim around there is all it needs. And the thing is, that shouldn't be an option. That should really be standard on a vehicle of this price. That's 77 for the base model. Now the thing is with the Range Rover and the Range Rover Sport that I'm in here, I don't really feel that it has a uber luxury feel compared to some other products in the marketplace. I'm going to talk a little bit about the pricing with the Porsche Cayenne in a moment, but I think that vehicle has a nicer interior. Some people disagree with me. Now, one thing I have to mention is the lift gate or tailgate at the back doesn't go up high enough. I cracked my head on the uh, center locking feature there. And another thing is my kids have driven in the Range Rover Sport many times and they dread going in the back seat. They find the back seats too hard. If you get the full size Range Rover, it is a bit softer back there. But that's one thing. I think it's kind of sport for sport's sake. It could be a little bit of luxury added in there as well. You get more stuff going on with the supercharged models in this autobiography in the center cluster. You've got buttons for their terrain select system. It adds some features. You get the uh, controls for the air suspension to raise and lower it in the center as well. So let's drive it. We'll talk about this wonderful engine, the wonderful sound, and just how quick this big truck is. Now here's the one thing I love about this vehicle. The sound. <laughs> it's just got a great sound to it. So it's a supercharged V8 with 510 horsepower and 461 pound-feet of torque. But here's the thing. There's a less expensive version of this uh, SUV that has 440 pound feet and that is the turbocharged six cylinder diesel. Now it certainly doesn't have the top end horsepower of the supercharged V8 but for average everyday commuting that sort of out of the pocket getting from traffic light to traffic light and giving you amazing fuel economy uh, the TD6 is a wonderful option. However, it's only sold in one trim level, and that's the HSE. So this autobiography has some tricks. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's got the four corner air suspension. It's got the low setting for off-road, and it also has a dynamic setting here in the center uh, to give you a much more performance oriented drive. And I haven't experienced this vehicle on a track, but I have a friend of mine who's a driving instructor and he's done track days with the Range Rover Sport and he's a Porsche technician. And he tells me that this is just as capable as any Porsche Cayenne that's out in the marketplace. 
So what's different about this latest Range Rover over previous models is the fact that it has a newer, lighter aluminum structure. And that's really the hallmark for Jaguar, Land Rover, and Range Rover is their new aluminum structures that are much lighter, stiffer, much more fuel efficient as well. Even though this has a big ass V8 under the hood, I'm getting 15 liters per 100 kilometers, which isn't fantastic, but for a vehicle of this much power, 500 plus horsepower, it's pretty damn good. But that sound, <laughs> it's interesting. You know what? I had the uh, Bolt electric car, and this week I'm driving this for the supercharged V8. As much as that is amazing technology, there's something visceral about a larger displacement engine uh, pumping out all of those dead dinosaurs. It's a sound that I think future generations won't know. And that's probably a good thing, but also a bit of a shame. So this top of range Range Rover, the autobiography is expensive, more on that in a moment, but you don't have to go all the way to this vehicle in order to experience the Range Rover Sport. So $77,000 is the base supercharged six cylinder. The one I would choose would be the TD6 with 440 pound feet of torque. That's what you really use from stoplight to stoplight. Amazing fuel economy, so refined and smooth on the inside, and it is a lot less expensive. When you get into the supercharged five liter models, that's when it starts to go up. Starting at $94,000, this one is 109. Now this Range Rover autobiography makes a run to 100 kilometers an hour in just over five seconds. As a comparison, the Porsche Cayenne GTS is almost exactly the same, zero to 100 about 5.3 seconds, and it's more expensive than this at $111,000. And if you've ever bought a Porsche, you have to add on to get it exactly the way you want. As I said, this is the top of range Range Rover Sport. If you can afford this, go for it. And if you're like most of the people watching this, you're just looking and admiring.